È troppo lunga la loro cosa. Ethan Hunt will be your point man as usual. But what? Grazie, non mi hai fatto battere. Scappa. Ah! Dove è? Con le mie mani. Ma me lo tacco, me lo tacco, me lo tacco. Io lo so, ma se lo devi dire per forza per me. Today we have accepted our mission, which was to talk about mission impossible. So we have Elia with me. Hello everyone, I'm the blue head here. And I'm Jade, Jade the little Frenchie. Because so we French. have yeah, we have nicknames now, just like a real spice here, you know? <laughs> so serious. So serious. Yeah, act like a spy now. Okay, we're here uh, today to talk about Mission Impossible franchise. I mean, just one of the franchises that is my personal favorite and I like it a lot. Um, uh, except from, I mean, have you seen James Bond? Do you know? I liked it. I liked cool. it, yeah. They are the most famous action franchise ever. So we will that. also talk about James Bond as yeah. well, but we won't promise you when. It must be secret. It's a secret mission. Yes. <laughs> so. Let's just start it. You're not stressed, are you? I I'm, I'm getting distressed just before talking, but then when I start talking it's fine. Which is totally stupid, I know. I just have to start talking, so that's why. Yeah, my hands are like wet. Like, that, yeah, that, that. same! It's awful, I hate it. I'm like, <laughs> they're cold, like half cold, half warm. It's awful. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> just so weird to listen to your own voice so loud in your own ears. It's so weird. That's the only weird thing about it. Okay, and don't forget about the thing here, okay? Yeah. Just maybe you can wave as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know <laughs> when, like... when do you want to finish <laughs> your talking. That's time! Okay. <clears throat> the music doesn't really match the theme, you know? No. Hmm? The music really doesn't match. Totally not. No. <laughs> it sounds like a corny movie in music. <laughs> no. Okay. So, to begin with, uh, we will start talking about Mission Impossible franchise, talking about the action movie genre. So, some consideration first. Awesome! So, what is an action movie in first place? I mean, everyone should know. Uh, the basic <laughs> info about an action movie was well, a film genre, obviously, which the protagonist or protagonists <laughs> are thrust. Uh, into a series of uh, challenges that typically include violence, fighting uh, scenes and physical feats and frantic chases that and these types of movies uh, tend to feature uh, resourceful heroes struggling against incredible odds uh, which include life-threatening situations, a villain or a pursuit which generally concludes in victory for the hero and sometimes really not that much victory for the hero also. So yeah. Yeah, there are very few <laughs> action movies with actually the villain willing, willing because it doesn't match with the, the expectations of the public. Yeah. But, so the genre, the genre sorry, began to develop in the 70s because it was like an increasing demand and we had like those stunts and special effect, effects arriving, but it was so expensive at the time. I mean, you needed like 5, 10, 15 people to just make one scene. So with the arrival of like the little genius, like the devilish child of the <laughs> action movie, the CGI, which is computer generated Im imagery, made it so much easier. So we had an explosion of so many new movies, an increase, increase, incre incredibly increase, great increase number of new action movies at the time. Sorry. And it really started in the 90s because of the television, etc. So it's closely associated with so many different genres. We have thriller, we have mm -hmm. adventures, we have fantastic, etc. But 
I mean, we have all of those names or categories, but I don't know you, but I never know which one means what and how to call that movie if it's an action, an adventure. So yeah, we need kind of to... Yeah, sometimes names. it really gets mixed up. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but So according to people, Mission Impossible franchise is also a spy movie. So as I said, I... We'll talk about spy movies after the break, and now it's after the break, so <laughs> let's get to this. Uh, well, this is uh, obviously some sort of uh, movie, uh, spies all over the place, <laughs> and full of espionage. So, um, the heroes are uh, generally government agents who must take violent action uh, actions against agents of rival governments or terrorists, obviously, and um, especially in recent years, as we are all... Um, aware of that. Um, the main character, mainly a spy, uh, is involved in investigating uh, various events of uh, often on a global uh, scale. This genre is significant uh, aspect of British cinema, uh, like the great, um, as uh, we've seen, H the great Hitchcock. Very, yeah. Yeah, Hitchcock, uh, the man who knew too much. So, Mission Impossible, we're back on Out the Cast and Roma Tray Radio, your program in entirely in English. And awesome, is it that? I know, and we, <laughs> you have with you uh, Little Frenchie, Elias, Jade, and Blue Head here, Helia. <laughs> so, we're going, to, we're going to talk about how and where all of the, that Mission Impossible adventure began. Because it is actually made from a TV show, an American TV show action called Mission Impossible. Haha, <laughs> what a surprise. Wow. <laughs> and it was diffused between 1966 and 1975. Mm -hmm. So actually seven seasons. Yeah. And as you know, Tom Cruise is the director of uh, the new one, the one everybody now knows. And he was actually sitting in his, in his couch watching that series, <laughs> and at one point he was like, I have an amazing idea. I'm going to make a franchise out of that series, like the seven seasons. What an idea. So he became the main character of his new idea. So narcissistic, I know. <laughs> but, so he became the main character of Come on. <laughs> Impos Impossible Mission Force, and it began the adventure in 1996. So the first in the first film, Tom Cruise is interpreting uh, Ed Ethan Hunt, which is, who is the leader of the force, the field force of that impossible mission force. A lot of force in that. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of force. <laughs> an action movie after all. So uh, let me tell you an interesting fact. The main uh, theme that you hear always when you watch a trailer for one of these franchises or even the uh, whole film is uh, from the original TV series. Hmm. Yes. And is composed by Lalo Schifrin, which just a couple of days ago, he got received an honorary Oscar. Oh, Just that's good for him. him. Yeah. Good for him. And he's really ta uh, talented, and you may also know uh, know him by um, some of his, uh, his other works, like Dirty Harry and Rush Hour. Oh, I know Rush Hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Pretty after cool. after the, um, the failure of other franchises, Cruz has decided something as a co-producer mm -hmm. that uh, for each and every movie. He will um, he will choose um, another director. So, um, when was the first movie released again? We just 1996. Said. Guys. Great, directed by none other than Brian De Palma. Ooh, cool. Nice. That's why it worked. So it was, uh, as we said, it was Cruz's first uh, experience as a co-producer. Mm -hmm. But. An interesting fact, I don't know if you have heard it before, but De Palma uh, only accepted this because he needed a commercial hit. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> I have nothing else. I need to save my career. Let's do <laughs> I that. need a commercial I mean. hit. <laughs> and I need some cash. <laughs> so. so, the movie went into production actually without finished script. <laughs> Can you just imagine for Blockbuster that the script the is not... <laughs> it may have been a panic. And the writer had to write the dialogues and stuff between each scene. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but good news, it actually, the movie actually ended up uh, under budget. So, good for them. Yeah, good for them. Uh, actually, it all went very, uh, pretty well. But um, another interesting fact is that many of the classic TV series 
um, castes uh, where actually um, they told them that they can have a role in the in the first movie, but they all denied. And actually, one of them left the theater <laughs> in the middle of the movie. Wow, that's how much they hated it. <laughs> Was it just competition? Maybe. Oh my God, they're doing the same thing as us. It's gonna be better. I don't know. I don't know. But so yeah. In that movie, De Palma is literally imposing his style. It's always plot over characters for him. Technique over violence. So it's kind of an old-fashioned action movie with like some wings to Hitchcock because it, it ends actually on top of a train, which is totally a hint, a hint to Hitchcock. And it, bega- it, be- it starts uh, at a ball, at a ball mm-hmm. in an embassy. Yeah. So it's like very old-style espionage movie with yeah, like exactly. nice dresses, hot girls, hot guys, <laughs> nice yes. music in a ball. So... A classic, in that a classic spy movie. Yeah, it's classic <laughs> and classy. Yeah. So at, in that office, the team has to go to Prague because they have to uncloak a Russian agent who has stolen the list of every single operative uh, agent in Central Europe. What a crime. So <laughs> yeah, but the operation is unfortunately for all the team a trap and everybody dies except Ethan Hunt. Hunt. So with a budget of 80 million, uh, the first movie sold more than uh, 457 million worldwide and got a 64% on Rotten Tomatoes. Clap, clap, clap. Yeah. The second film was released in 2000 and was directed by John Wu and the original soundtrack by the great Hans Zimmer with a budget of 125 million sold over than 546 million worldwide and scored... 57% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is not as good as the first as one. As the first one. And the problem is the style of who. Because it was so different. It was more poetic than action. It was... He's from Hong Kong, so we might imagine like this very... Asian way of perceiving the the beauty. They have a very personal way of, of perceiving that. And we can feel it in that movie. It's more poetic, almost feminine yeah. in the beauty. And I mean, everybody remembers that scene when um, Tom Cruise is beating up a guy on the sand and you have the, the wind on his <laughs> long hair and like the sun is shining. It's so it's, poetic, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like a ballet. You see like battles in the, on the, in the sky, on the ground, on the beach. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like an action movie and still it feels like James Bond. 98 million worldwide mm-hmm. and it was meh. Uh, <laughs> and the score of 70 persons on Rotten Tomatoes. And yet, it was the most expensive and the least convincing. Yeah, That's I, a bad I grade for J.J. Abrams <laughs> because he's known to have modernized the TV fiction with Alias and Lost. And he just like used the recipe, like huge budget, action scenes, a little bit of romance. And yet, the cake was absolutely disgusting, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. The problem is, it was a very simple plot, not a lot of humor, and it was only a movie made at the glory of uh, Tom, um, Tom Cruise. So it was literally boring, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Did you really find that boring? I found it terribly boring. I, I didn't go to the end, I have to admit it. Oh because my god. It was, it was a pure product of Hollywood. <laughs> And it almost signed the death of the, the, the franchise, oh, to be wow. honest. Because in that opus, so we have Eta Ethan Hunt, Hunt, which is supposed to be the, who is supposed to be the very big agent, field agent, yes. super hot, etc. Yes. And That's yet right. he's like settled with a woman and they want to get married and he doesn't want to win the field anymore and he's training people. <laughs> but we find him back for a second when he wants to save like that, that young recruit that he trained. And so he and eventually goes back. she dies. <laughs> she dies, yeah. Spoiler and, alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. And then, and then yeah, so she, he, he's like teared apart between like, I want to go to in the, on the field and then his fiance is is uh, captured and so he has to find a solution. Yes. Yeah, it's just like the yeah. recipe, but not the cake. Yeah. So let's go to the fourth installment. Oh, Mission Impossible go. Ghost Protocol released in 2011 was directed by Brad Bird, which many may know him from uh, directing Incredibles. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. Incredibles 1 and 2. 
uh, with a budget of uh, 145 million it made around 695 million worldwide and got a huge score of 93 on Rotten Tomatoes wow yeah. that is a relief for them probably yes because sort of like well. from, Prague to, from Prague to Moscow mm -hmm. from Dubai to Mumbai Ethan Hunt has, has to share the projector with another guy. What <laughs> a terrible, terrible thing. Yeah, because Tom Cruise had to share the projector with uh, Jeremy. Jeremy Renner. Yeah. Because Jeremy Renner was supposed to replace him when the franchise was on the verge of yes. falling apart. They wanted to uh, replace Tom Cruise, but then he eventually he succeeded in keeping his spot. Oh yeah, it's actually Tom Cruise's franchise. Let's say that finally Mission Impossible is back. I know, and right? We've, we've been expecting that for years. <laughs> it's just, just enough of Hitchcock, just yes. enough of classical movie style, and the rest literally filled with, with action, and action scenes, and impressive footage, and of course risk. It was a successful cocktail for them. Just enough of artistic mm -hmm. and commercial. That opus literally signed the revival of the franchise. The plot is that agents are literally left uh, on their own in enemy territory yes. and chase, and they decide to chase a um, ghost organization. Wow. The intrigue is based, uh, based on the plot of the, the plot theory. Oh my God, there is a plot theory, which is very, <laughs> very, very uh, spread in America, of course. So, finally, 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 Mission Impossible Fallout, the latest uh, installment, came out just this summer, about July, I guess, was directed by Christopher McQuarrie, making him the first uh, director to come back for the se mm -hmm. for second time. Maybe Tom Cruise has decided that his first strategy was not the best. Yeah, maybe. But Christopher McQuarrie really did well. Because, I know. Um, my personal opinion is that this last one was the best. I mean, it was action-packed and I loved it. Also, the soundtrack done by uh, Lorne Balf is by far my uh, favorite and I think the best uh, soundtrack in this franchise. I find it, I mean, awesome. Uh, with a budget of 178 million, making it the most expensive movie of this franchise. And one of his reasons is that Tom Cruise, in, in an incident <laughs> which uh, blew the internet, uh, broke his ankle. Oh my god, yes. that's what happens when you're not a professional in cascades. <laughs> so it cost uh, the production team and the insurance team cost many many dollars too much actually yeah okay we still have two minutes two seconds no two minutes no it was there it was about three minutes yeah yeah we reached three uh, three minutes so three minutes okay but you finished yeah. no we had to wrap it up i saw the time we can just yeah we can just skip that the last no, one. we can talk about this Still, because I haven't talked about it from here, yeah. made this much and this on Rotten Tomatoes. And then I have to talk about my own things. Yes, this is yours. Yeah. And, we... and then, not the casting, we won't talk about the casting. Okay. We'll get to here. Interesting facts. Because these are awesome to talk I about agree. them. I agree. Let's just leave the casting behind. Okay. <laughs> oh, here. Exactly. Obviously, my opinion is the same. So, okay. What do so you think about it? Well, I've read some critics, and it was not the best in the sense that where is the, the humor gone? It was so serious. Yeah, it was so serious. dark. <laughs> I mean, we had the action. We had like mm -hmm. chasing cars, spectacular special effects, and cascade, cascades. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, the background, background, background. Sorry, yes. I will. I will, I will made it, but it felt like the end in the sense that it was like the last James Bond, super dark, yes, not humorous at all, and just, just an action movie for an action movie, according to me and according to many critics. So that's what I've heard. That's what I can tell you. I mean, my personal opinion is that it was. Magnific magnificent in the sense of special effects because we have the means today to do like amazing things with it, but. The plot itself was disappointing. 
the plot was really simple. Yes, I agree with. I totally agree with that. Mm. Uh, what I see uh, that makes it by far the best one in the franchise it's the um, the technical aspect of it. Mm. The soundtrack, the uh, the cinematography, the yeah. editing. I loved everything, uh, all of this mm. about it. But yes, the plot was really yeah. That's what I disliked. I must admit, simple. But it's interesting that the series has received, uh, in general, a positive reception from the critics and is actually the sixteenth uh, highest grossing film series of all time, which is amazing. Yes, with a worldwide uh, gross of over uh, three point five billion dollars <laughs> wow just imagine that much cash i mean mission <laughs> mission accomplished for them totally Literally. totally so did you know that um i didn't tell me <laughs> actually in the first movie there was not even a single shootout for not a, even a single one wow for an action movie it's for impressive a, yes and uh, cruz didn't actually shoot he uh, he held a gun, but he didn't shoot. Nah, that's not, it, it takes it takes away all the fun part, but like <laughs> like being in an, in an action movie. But it's me. an art to make an action film without shootouts. I agree. But it was the old fashioned. They had that style, that class. <laughs> they were classy somehow. But so to talk about something else that I didn't know, the iconic scene which everybody knows about when Cruz is dropping from the ceiling in the first movie, is actually inspired from a classic movie from the nineteen sixty four. A name Top Cappy. Yes. Don't try to write it. The spelling is terrible. <laughs> and in, in, so in that movie, a group of thieves is, has actually decided to use and write to steal a, a jewel from a Tur Turkish museum. And the room was inspired by Kubrick in 1968 in Okay, I'm a terrible singer. I will, I will just speak and not try to, to sing. It's a bad idea. So, to, to continue in our uh, iconic moments of that franchise, the iconic scene with Cruz uh, on the second opus, which is uh, fighting on the beach. Yes. He actually asked the guy to enter like a real fight because he wanted it to, to be real. So... That's what he did. It was Too real kicks, real, real punches. <laughs> Too real, real. And so, yeah, I mean, I would have loved to see that because if some people love, like, girls fight, <laughs> like a real guy fight on an action movie, but actually real could have been really cool. But whatever. Another nice thing is that because Cruz likes to do his own cascades and, like, sk like keep, like, stick to his character mm -hmm. and try to do everything. Yes. So in the... Um, in, there is a scene mm -hmm. when a knife is actually a quarter inch from his eye. Oh my god! And he asked it to be a real knife as well. So I don't know what is in his head. It's probably <laughs> bravery? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 but, no, 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 there's a fine line between bravery and stupidity, to be honest with you. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> we should tell him, maybe. Well, yeah. next time his helicopter lands. I like, I, I, I lands like his and... style, though. Yeah. But anyways, mm -hmm. the fourth movie, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, uh, was completely shot in IMAX. Mm. And director Brad Bird actually asked uh, the experiences of Christopher Nolan's uh, The Dark Knight crew and um, consulted with the uh, with their team because they're Hi the guys. Most... I I must know how to how do you how to use, use your use computer a... because I I'm don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the, he really needed their experience because the guy Christopher Nolan is the best known for uh his using IMAX stuff his yeah, mastery yeah. <laughs> so all right everybody what you just heard before just we start talking was the latest mission impossible trailer which uh, i mean in my opinion is the best trailer of this year 2018 i loved it a lot anyways this is all the time we've got to talk about mission impossible franchise hope you loved 
this uh, our show yeah, 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 yeah. if it was interesting i think I, it's I, mission I, I can i can i think we can say it's mission accomplished i i think we can say that we can totally say that so yeah so i'm looking forward for our next mission now. don't forget to listen to our podcast uh Absolutely. on the website and spotify and mixcloud and you can follow us also uh on instagram twitter facebook Oh, everything. We have everything. So, <laughs> we're spies after all. We have to have a media cover. Yeah, so <laughs> let's just go and see you, hear you, whatever, next time. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. At three. three. <laughs>